for a Mustang. So pricing for the GT500 was leaked and I've gotten many questions over the past couple of weeks about whether or not I will be getting one. And the answer to that question is no. Well, maybe just not yet and here's why. You know, the biggest reason why I won't be getting one is pretty simple. The price. So the price came out today and the base price is about $74,000. That's with delivery and gas guzzler tax and everything. And by itself, that's not bad. I mean, if you really break it down, 760 horsepower for a car like this, that's gonna be a 2020 model, not a Challenger that's a few years old, like the Hellcat and the Retta. It's 2020 brand new model, and it's gonna be 760 horsepower and $74,000. By itself, that's not that bad of a deal, but that's not the whole story. You know, some of the options are kind of outrageously priced to be honest remember this is a mustang now i know that this is a special mustang but this is still a mustang and eighteen thousand dollars for this uh, carbon fiber track pack is a lot the biggest one ten thousand dollars for over the top stripes ten thousand dollars for stripes Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand. Ten. 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 I believe it's twenty thousand dollars if you wanted to get that on the Ford GT. But I will guarantee you, after going through the factory and seeing how they make the Ford GTs, the twenty thousand dollar Ford GT is very different than a ten thousand dollar option on the Mustang. Remember, a Mustang. And let's not forget about dealer markup. Remember when the GT350 came out a couple years ago, it was impossible to find one anywhere near sticker price. If you got lucky, you might have pre-ordered one at the sticker price or something from a buddy you knew at the dealer. You could not get one on the lot anywhere near sticker price. The dealers knew that and they were marking it up a ton. This is now a, a rare car, a more exclusive car, a higher priced car, uh, a car that now has more demand in the marketplace. I expect massive markups, probably to the tune of twenty, fifty, to even a hundred thousand dollars at some dealerships. You might be able to find the one car somewhere for uh, eighty thousand dollars, and the exact same car somewhere else for one hundred and fifty. So that's not really the reason why I'm not going to buy one, but it is going to be hard to find at a decent price. You guys can do the math yourself if you've seen these price sheets, but if you have a Fully loaded, every box checked Ford Mustang Shelby GT500. It will cost you $110,000 for a Mustang. $110,000 Mustang. This isn't a Ford GT or a Mustang or some other, you know, higher level sports car. This is still a Mustang. It's still, it's still a Mustang, it still shares the same body and DNA of the $20,000 for sale. And well, you're probably thinking, well, the GT350 is also expensive. It also has a dealer markup. It also has a gas color tax. It has all these things. That's true. It has a base price with nothing on it of about $60,000, $61,000. And so that's about a $12,000 gap between the GT500 and the GT350. Now, the big difference, though, is the options. The options on the GT500 are astronomically priced, even compared to the GT350. There are also a few options that are only available on the 500 and not on the 350. But if you got a completely loaded, specced out GT350R, it would cost you about $78,000. 
that is roughly $32,000 less than the most highly specced out GT500. And that's not considering the fact they may make something like a GT500R, which would widen that gap even further. So for a $32,000 difference, you can get the rarer car in the 350R and also, I don't know, slap a supercharger on it. Do, do something else to those cars to make them a little more equal and still probably have tons of money left in the bank. You know, I have to compare this car against the C8, especially the C8 Z06 that should be coming out later this year. You know, I got a little, uh, you know, grilled on my last video by a couple of people because I compared the C8 to the GT500. I get it. They're in different classes. The GT500 should be compared against the ZL1 or Camaro. Totally get that. But... You know, Chevy's not not looking at the GT500. They're also not not looking at now the price point of the GT500. So now we should likely be able to get a C8 Z06 for less money than a well-optioned GT500. Now that we know that a GT500 is going to cost you $100,000 with options and then way more with the dealer markup, Look at this gap now that Chevy has to fill with a $65,000, $70,000 base price for a C8 to get to a C Z06. They have, they have a huge gap to fit a Z06 in there with a supercharger with 700 something horsepower and still do it for less than you're going to be able to on a lot somewhere. And you know about the cars that we should be comparing it to. The cars that I compared it to, the normal Hellcat and the ZL1. You know, the ZL1 uh, base price is about $64,000. So it's by far the cheapest, I think, of the three when it comes to uh, how fast it is. It brings up the rear. So I guess that makes sense that it's going to be the cheapest. If you compare it against the... The, if you compare it against the Hellcat, though, the base Hellcat is much cheaper than the GT500. The Hellcat Red Eye is right about the same price. It'll cost you right at about $74,000 as the entry-level base price. Um, that, I think, is actually a good comparison. But remember, I do believe they will make something higher than the GT500. Whether they call it a GT500R or performance that makes it more horsepower than the Hellcat Red Eye. Once that happens, it will be well higher than the $74,000 you can get a Hellcat Red Eye for at 797 horsepower. You know, outside of the price, the real reason why I'm not gonna be the one that's gonna be getting one anytime soon is really logistics. You know, I have a few cars. I have four cars that just sit in the driveway at my house, uh, not to mention the, the GTs that are over at the ranch. And so the four cars that sit in my house, I, I, are, I already don't get to drive enough. So. If I were to go out and get something like a GT500 or even a C8 when they come out, it would have to replace the Volvo, this car I'm in now, it would have to replace my truck, and it would have to replace the Corvette. The Corvette honestly wouldn't be that much of a loss if I replaced it with another sports car. But the truck I need when I need a truck. Last weekend, I needed a truck. It's good to have one sitting in the parking lot. This car, seven seat SUV, I need it for the family and I need it for business. I take people places on appointments all the time. That won't be too easy to do in a GT500 or even a C8. This car is very comfortable to commute in. The GT500 might not be. So that is another big reason why it's not gonna be best for me, but it may be okay for you. I also have to factor in the expense of operating this vehicle. Operating this vehicle. Again, if I even if I eliminate all three of the other vehicles, and especially this one being my primary daily driver, to drive something like that, between gas, insurance, maintenance, tires, everything like that, I am sure I will double the daily over really all three of these other cars combined. I said at the beginning that, and you remember I said at the beginning that I said at least I'm not going to get one for right now. 
I'd still love to have one, don't get me wrong. I'm not here bashing the car, and I'm not here saying anything I didn't already expect as far as the price of the car. I knew it would probably cost somewhere in this range, although I, given the uh, resale value of the GT350, and consider how popular uh, this car has become uh, before it's even been released, I think its resale value is going to hold up really well, which is great for the people that are going to buy one at sticker early on. Not too great for the people like me who might want to wait a year and get a used one at a discount. Sure, I can do that with a normal Mustang or a Mustang GT. Probably not with this one. The GT350s are still holding their value extremely well uh, a couple years after they came out. I expect the GT500s to do the same thing. Please just don't be one of those guys that goes out and pays $50,000 over sticker because you will earn none of that back in resale value. This car will hold its value extremely well only compared to the MSRP. If you paid $150,000 for the car and the MSRP was $100,000, a year from now it might be worth ninety, dollars which is great, but you just lost $60,000. All around, that's the reason why I'm not going to be getting the car. Again, I'm not massively surprised by the base price of this car. I am a little surprised by the price of the options and the upside price of this car at well over $100,000. Um, that surprised me a little bit, and really for that reason, I won't be getting one, at least at first. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'm not really betting on that. But... Uh, ultimately, I love the car. I still stand by my word of the previous video that I would choose it over the ZL1 or the Hellcat Red Eye, no doubt. Uh, I'm just a little um, surprised by some of the pricing, especially on the options that were leaked out today. Tell me what you think. Maybe I'm out of line. Maybe it's the best deal in the world. Maybe 760 horsepower. For, maybe I'm out of line. If I am, great. I apologize. I apologize. Let me know in the... Uh, let me know in the comments your thoughts. The other guy says, like, gently destroy that subscribe button. And hit the bell. Am I you? And is this the script? Anyway, I'm out. See you next time.